Welcome back to the Chad Easty Show, News Talk 95.1 FM and 790 AM. KFYO. Our next guest here on the program, someone who I uh, have to think is uh, pretty happy after the last uh, two nights of uh, of debates. Uh, joining us on the phones, uh, Liz Harrington, national spokeswoman with the RNC. Liz, good morning. How are you today? Hey, I'm great. How are you? Doing wonderful. Uh, Liz, when, when, uh, after watching these two debates, I, I would have to think the RNC is pretty happy that that the the far left was uh, exposed so much. I mean, throughout the last two nights, and, and where the Democrat Party is heading to. Right, and just when you thought it couldn't get more crazy than Wednesday night with people talking about taxpayer-funded abortions for trans women and uh, getting rid of our border laws and everything else, then you got uh, Thursday night, which was a crazy lurch to the left. I mean, absolutely insane openly advocating for everyone's taxes to go up, the Green New Deal, 10 out of 10 candidates on stage raise their hands to give taxpayer-funded health care, quote-unquote free health care that we're going to pay for, to illegal immigrants who are not in this country legally. I mean, the party has really gone so far to the left, and I think it's a sad thing to see. Well, and not only do they want to give free health care, I mean, this is almost an invitation to the world, yeah. is it not, that Okay, because the the same people on stage last night, and and I think just about everyone the previous night, uh, said yes, where we want to decriminalize uh, crossing into this nation. That if you're here, you're not you're not breaking a law where we can send you back. That once you get here, uh, you know we may slap you on the wrist and fine you, but you're you're not a criminal at that point, and you're going to get free health care. That's just inviting everybody in, is it not? Absolutely. This is why we are here in the first place with the border crisis. You know why? Because in 2012, <laughs> when Barack Obama was, you know, a lame duck safely after, after he won re-election, he decided to open up our laws, say we're not going to penalize you if you're in this country illegally and you're young. So what it happened? Everyone started sending their young unaccompanied minors to the border as a way to get in. That was the first crisis that really reached ahead in 2014. And what did Barack Obama say? Oh, we'll send you back. Do not come. And then a month later, he authorized executive action to rewrite our laws to say that you can be here legally for young illegal immigrants. And that's what we're still seeing. The Supreme Court apparently is going to rule on that next year, next session. We just learned that. But that is why we're in this state. People are coming here because of lawlessness and the loopholes in our system. Now they figured out if you set, if you show up with a child, we have loopholes that you will get in this country and you can beat the system. And that's why we're seeing this massive flood of a hundred over a hundred thousand every month. And so for the Democrats to now turn around when they said it was a manufactured crisis, this is a crisis of their own making. And then to criticize this administration is doing everything they can, working with Mexico, getting Mexico to do more to stop this this situation. They're criticizing the administration, the Trump administration, and it took them months to even get funding through emergency funding. That's a band aid on the problem. And now they get up on stage and say, "Oh." More people come because we're going to give you everything for free and we're going to decriminalize it and we'll give you uh, amnesty. I mean, it's absolutely outrageous. And you're just going to exacerbate the problem, which is the humanitarian crisis. Because you know who uh, benefits from lawlessness? The cartels who are already exploiting the system and exploiting children with human trafficking, sex trafficking. They're renting children. It's absolutely appalling. And that's what you get from open borders advocacy. Visiting with Liz Harrington here on the Chad Hasty Show. Liz, uh, I, I'm going to throw out a couple of names here, and, and I want just your reaction and, and where you think they are right now in this whole process after the uh, debates last night. Uh, Elizabeth Warren. She is safely uh, taken over the Bernie Sanders wing, I think. Bernie faded into the background last night, but he 
has successfully accomplished uh, transforming the Democratic Party, as we all saw, uh, with all of them adopting very far-left socialist policies. But I don't think she hurt herself in the first night, so I think she'll stick around for a while. Do you, do you think Bernie hurt himself last night, or do you think Bernie was hurt last night? I think Bernie is old news. You know, yeah. I think, you know, a lot of people want a shiny new object, but there's nothing new about Bernie. There's nothing new about his ideas. They've been the same for decades when he was decades ago when he was honeymooning in the Soviet Union during the Cold War, when he was praising Fidel Castro and his murderous uh, dictatorship in communist Cuba and that revolution. So there's nothing new about his uh, you know, policies, his age, anything. I mean, he's the same guy he was. And I think he successfully transformed the Democratic Party, sadly. And so they're all advocating for him, but they want a shiny new object advocating the same old socialist policies that he is. Speaking of something old, uh, Joe, <laughs> Joe Biden. I mean, I've been saying it for a while. This is a guy who's run for president twice before. This is his third time. He's never made it out of Iowa. He's always been a weak candidate. The only reason he was polling high was the name recognition and going off the coattails of two failed terms of Barack Obama. And he's not a strong front runner. He never has been. And I think it's amazing to see all their hands go up last night for these really radical policies. But you look at Biden, he looks around before he raised his finger. <laughs> but it, Oh, but he raised it. Yes. But he is the definition of a finger-in-the-wind politician. No conviction. He is seeing where the wind's blowing. The Democratic Party, it's blowing far left, so he's trying to keep up. And I, he's lost a few steps in the years. I mean, he's been in the swamp for 44 years, almost a half century. And... I just don't think he's going to be able to keep up. Well, and, and it's a great point you bring up, and it's something I think even the moderators last night noticed, is that Joe Biden would do that move uh, that you know kids in school would do when they really don't want to raise their hand, but they're like, ah, crap, everyone else is raising their hand. But he would do the finger. And, and, yeah. and so they would say, well, uh, Mr. Vice President, we, do you have a question or were you agreeing? And he would never say, I agreed with what everyone did. He would launch to his own little spill. So that was uh, that was interesting. Uh, Kamala Harris. What do you think about Kamala Harris? Well, I think she she did herself a favor by going after. I mean, that was obviously the big takeaway, going after Biden directly, um, using her experience. I'm a little puzzled by it, though, however, because a lot of her formative years were spent in Canada <laughs> growing up there. Um, but, you know, I think she had a good night. She's definitely improved on her performance. However, she is advocating very far left policies. I mean, this is a woman who the first thing she said when she got in the race is, yeah, let's just eliminate all that private health insurance. Let's get rid of it. Oh, never mind that 180 million Americans have private health care and they rate it. 80% rate it as good or excellent, right? And she's calling for complete radical ideas. So I think she'll have a chance because she's a more palatable candidate that's pushing these extreme ideas in the Democratic primary. But in a general election, she's pushing the same far left policies. And she's also spreading lies. I mean, she's out there saying, I'm meeting people all the time who are working two jobs, three jobs to get by. That's just not true. 0.2% of Americans have two full-time jobs. It's just not reality. This economy actually is working for everyone. It is booming. And everybody on that stage, every policy they're advocating for, hiking taxes, getting government back as this big force, taking over private industry, you know what that's going to do? It's going to tank the economy, and then people really will be working two and three jobs to get by. I've got two more people to ask you about. Uh, the, the first one is Pete Buttigieg. I, I thought he had a, a pretty pretty good night last night, but there was one, one instance uh, in his uh, debate last night that I, I think he lost a, a lot of those, I, I guess he's aiming for, the, you know, maybe those the Midwestern blue-collar worker, you know, Republican on the fence sitters. And that's when he, he attacked Republican Christians 
yeah. uh, and, and said that Republican Christians, uh, you know, wrap themselves in religion, but but they're hypocrites because they like to see these kids in cages, Liz. It's so divisive. And that's what that's what it's such a they always accuse this president when you actually listen to his speeches and and listen to him talk like he gave a great speech the other day at the Faith and Freedom Coalition. It's uniting. It's inspiring. And then you you, they always uh, attack this president as being so divisive and everything else. And then you get Mayor Pete, who puts this nice face on radical policies and he is divisive. He's attacking Christians. That's how he made a name for, self, for himself in this race, based on a lie. There was no fight with our vice president, Mike Pence. Mike Pence does not have a problem or an issue with Mayor Pete whatsoever. He used that to make a name for himself and fundraise, and, and it worked because the media lapped it up. But this is another example. I mean, he's been out there saying, basically implying that God would be a Democrat or something. It's so... It's so offensive, and it's so it, it's so it makes you wonder too because he's up there advocating for taxpayer funded abortion yeah. and no limits on abortion. That's another extreme we saw on Wednesday and Thursday night. Not a single Democrat was willing to say, "Well, you know what? Maybe in the last three months of pres." Uh, pregnancy, we could have some limits. Maybe it should be illegal f- to have a sex selective abortion and to a- kill a child just because it's going to be a girl. Where's the leader in the Democratic Party that's willing to say that, to stand up for the most vulnerable among us? And then Mayor Pete's trying to take the badge of religion. It's just, I think it's insulting. I think it's very divisive. Uh, Liz, uh, before I let you go, uh, Julian Castro uh, down here in Texas, a lot of people obviously know him. I, I think he's worked his way maybe into a, a, a slight discussion into a VP consideration after his uh, after his takedown of Beto O'Rourke uh, on Wednesday night. Uh, what, what is your, you know, what, what, when you all look at Julian Castro, do you look at him as someone who, who may be on that, that VP short list? I think he did improve his standing with Democratic voters, and but I was amused by some of the media reaction. Oh, wow, what a breakout star, all this great you know, accolades, when this is the guy who one of the first things he said was, yeah, let's have taxpayer-funded abortions for trans women. Yeah. That is not, I mean, what? This is so out of the mainstream. This is one of the, re- it's identity politics, it's political correctness <laughs> on steroids, political correctness lost in 2016 it's going to lose again in 2020 i mean it's pandering it's all, it's so insane and he is also leading the way on the open borders fight and yeah. decriminalizing uh illegal crossing which is so extreme and again like we said is it creates a bigger magnet for people to take this treacherous journey and, and and risk their lives it's horrible and and be exploited by the cartel so he may have made a name for himself at the fringe left of the democratic party, but it's not going to help them in a general election. Liz, I know you're all in uh, uh, for President Trump and with the uh, Republicans, uh, you know, moving forward and and promoting them. But can we make sure that Marianne Williamson gets on the debate stage (laughs) every single month? I mean, we were we were talking about it last night, I must <laughs> confess. You know, everyone chipping a dollar because we need to get her back on stage. <laughs> what was that, man? She was <laughs> that was a little odd at the end. I heard Chris Steyerwalt on Fox News describe it as a love hex she put on President Trump. That was a little out there, but uh, hey, I say the more the merrier. Let's get her back on. We're stage. putting New Zealand on notice. That's what right, we're doing. Right. Liz hey. Harrington, National spokeswoman with the rnc as always appreciate your time we'll visit with you in the future absolutely thanks for having me have a good one all right chad hd show news talk kfyo you can follow uh liz on uh, twitter as well at liz rnc